Oh, hello. I'm the Sarah Jane Adventures Boy, and I'm ever so shy and British. But I do like to watch the telly. Sometimes I might laugh. <laughs> Sometimes I might get scared. Sometimes I might even cry. Is it wrong not to always be glad? Join me as I watch the new season of Doctor Who and let you live vicariously through my emotions. Hi, and that's our biggest competitor. This reaction craze is sweeping the internet. Oh, Jamie, I don't see that that's too much of a challenge for us. A reactor can have his video up in an hour and gets about quintuple our ratings. Death to the heathens! Oh, hello, everyone, and welcome back to You Know Who. I'm your host, the reviewer. And with me, as always, is my cameraman, Jamie. All I know is if the chic geeks need a cameraman, I'm available. Hush, Jamie, or you'll receive no bread pudding with your supper. It's time for a brand new season of Doctor Who in the final run for old 12C. This is The Pilot. Meet Bill Potts. She's been sneaking into the doctor's lectures in between cooking french fries in the university cafeteria. She rambles on quite a bit without ever getting to the point, and we're introduced to fact number one about Bill. She's a rambler. The doctor takes a liking to her and begins to tutor her in their off hours. Later, in between tutoring, chips, and lectures, Bill meets and falls for Heather. Fact number two. Bill is gay. Hold it! What's going on? Uh, Jamie, what do you mean? Why are we only seeing still images of the show and not video clips? Well, Jamie, do you remember that treaty we signed last summer with the Utu bots? I'm afraid this is the only way that I can broadcast you-know-who without them honing in on our signal and yanking us off the site of existence. You mean... Yes, Jamie. Going forward, you-know-who is in the Reconstruction Era. Oy vey. Now, I'd originally thought with the haircut and abundance of denim that Bill might be from the 1980s, but again, I'm afraid Moffat and the BBC have shown an amazing lack of imagination concerning the new companion, and we've got just another modern girl joining him. Although the fact that Bill is a lesbian is a long overdue inclusion in the cast of TV companions, still, it wouldn't hurt them to think outside the box with their new companions. Bring someone in from another era, even an alien. Bill then follows the Doctor and Nardle into the basement. They're trying, and failing, to break into a strange vault. We never get into the vault in this episode, so I assume Moffat is setting it up to be the season-long mystery for the year. Like the cracks in the wall, or Clara's multiple lives. I'm also not sure that Doctor Who is one of the shows that needs to be held together by a season-long plot thread, but I don't think it hurts the show either. Bill meets Heather again. She has a defect in her eye that creates a star pattern, and talks about her desire to leave life behind. She takes Bill to see a puddle, but it hasn't rained in weeks. Heather wonders if Bill can see anything odd in the puddle. When she can't, Heather runs off. Even as a voice in the puddle says... Pilot is located. At Christmas, Bill gives the doctor a rug and she talks about her late mother. She doesn't have much to remember mom by since she hated having her picture taken. Later, her foster mother has found a ton of old pictures. Bill's not sure, but is that the doctor? She runs into Heather at a vacant lot again, but she quickly disappears. Unseen by Bill, she's now trapped in the puddle. Ah, it is no problem, Lassie. I've wound up with my face in a puddle many times. Sometimes it was even water. Oh, Jamie, that's disgusting. I didn't mean urine. I meant a puddle of my own vomit. Jamie! Bill tells the doctor about the puddle, how your face looks wrong in it, and he takes off, leaving her to trail behind. The puddle isn't a reflection. It's showing you how you look to everyone else. The puddle is a chemical mimicking people. There are strange birds around the puddle, but we'll save that for the wrap-up. However, anyone who's seen Remembrance of the Daleks know what they mean. The doctor hurries Bill off, and we hear, Passenger selected, and the puddle begins to move. At home, Bill hears the shower stop, but Mom is on the phone, so it's not her back there. Bill doesn't find anyone in the shower, but sees Heather's star eye looking back from a drain. She runs to the doctor, but outside the university sees a soaking wet Heather. However, all Heather can do is repeat Bill's words and pursue her. She's dead. Almost as much as the chemistry between these two. We're meant to believe there's some sort of deep connection between Heather and Bill, but all we see is a bit of flirting on Bill's part and Heather pushing her away. Even the doctor gets it right later when he calls this just a crush. Bill runs to the doctor and Heather pours through the door. The duo escape into the TARDIS with Nardle, who makes a fart joke. And with that, any signs of the deeper carry Nardle are gone, and he's back to comic relief mode. Don't get me wrong, that's something Matt Lucas does very well, but it seems like we're stretching it with two companions here. One for laughs and one for drama. 
Can either Matt Lucas nor Pearl Mackey emote the other side of things? The Doctor materializes in the vault, but he realizes the creature is after Bill, not the vault, and takes him to Australia, but again, Heather is right there. He then goes to an alien planet to test the creature's ability to follow them. The Doctor thinks those burns are from a spaceship landing. The fluid was a superintelligent, shape-shifting component of the ship, but something changed when it encountered Heather. Sure enough, moments later, wet Heather arrives out of a pool and they have to run again. It's never spelled out how Heather is so fast or how she can move through time and space. Maybe that's something to be revealed on a later show? This time, the Doctor takes him to the heart of a battle. The Daleks versus the Movellans. Always nice to get a cameo from the classic era. Ah, now some of you may be wondering just who these <coughs> late 70s, early 80s, disco wig, leisure jumpsuit wearing aliens are. They're the Movellans, an alien race that actually managed to beat back the Dalek Empire for a long era. They were introduced in the third Doctor episodes and were referenced as late as the fifth Doctor's Dalek episode. How did they beat the Daleks, you ask? Simple. They're the power of disco music! <laughs> You see, the Daleks could never hit them because they were... Movellin right along! <laughs> oh, the whimsy! <laughs> Nardle is given a sonic screwdriver and sent off to seal off parts of the Dalek ship. They dodge a Dalek laser blast that then hits Heather to no effect. Seriously, Wet Heather has kind of become a god now, and all this from goo she found in a parking lot? They run, rejoin Nardle as they encounter a Dalek with a star eye. It turns to water and then reforms as Heather, which strangely reminds me of another Doctor Who story about water and Daleks, The Genocide Machine, which was actually the very first big finished story I ever listened to. They finally find out that Heather's last thought before joining the goo was promising to wait for Bill. She can't leave until Bill comes with her or lets her go. They hold hands and she sees the universe through Heather's eyes, even as the Doctor warns her that they're merging and she can never come back. Bill says goodbye and the thing that was Heather leaves. Back in his office, the doctor tries to take her memories away, but she won't give up the most exciting and heartbreaking moments of her life. He relents and lets her keep her memories for a night, and then argues with pictures of River and Susan that he's meant to be here in secret. In fact, Peter Capaldi is playing the doctor as a man of secrets this time around, and he does it well, showing that he's at war with his own nature to be a bit of an extrovert. I sometimes feel it's a bit pointless to critique Capaldi from episode to episode. At this stage, he knows what he's doing as the doctor and puts on an enjoyable performance. Walking home, Bill finds the Doctor and the TARDIS. They'll look for Heather, because now, anything is possible. And the duo head off in a scene that's pretty reminiscent of the time he left with Rose and the time he left with Martha. Hey, I know there was a lot of positive buzz surrounding this episode of Pearl Mackey's acting, but I think the biggest sin of the pilot is that it's pretty standard fare. All stuff we've seen since Doctor Who relaunched. Oh, while I liked some of the acting, it did feel like they were asking a little too much of the audience. Asking us to assume that there was some great romance happening while presenting a pretty standard new companion meets established Doctor story. I give Doctor Who, the pilot, three TARDISes out of five. I see what you did there. You walked the review into the recap instead of presenting it at the end. Down is up, left is right. Nothing makes sense on this show anymore. Take a Valium, Jamie. I'm trying to present a new format to the show to make it more concise so that we can present episodes in a timelier manner. But we still have plenty to do at the end of the episode. Like what? Like? Well, Jamie, like introduce the Time Lord of the Week. <laughs> we Time Lords have been living among you humans for quite some time. Each week I'm going to introduce you to a new Time Lord. This week, it's Evan, also known as the Miser, one of the cheapest Time Lords that's ever been my misfortune to know. However, he solved the conundrum of going through space and time on his own dime by turning his TARDIS into a <clears throat> fortune-telling machine that's coin-operated. So whenever anyone came and put a quarter in his TARDIS, off he'd go through time and space! <laughs> Unfortunately, he had to test this himself, and when he put the coin in, the TARDIS left, leaving him behind. It's never been seen again. Last I heard, he was living among the carnies at Coney Island, operating the Cyclone. A sad fate indeed. <clears throat> Not bad, eh, Jamie? I'm sorry, reviewer. I'm from the past and I naturally fear change. I kind of caught into this new format. Oh, I quit. For the unmitigated call. Jamie! But I guess I need a new cameraman. Well, thank you for joining uh, me. I'm the reviewer, and this is You Know Who.
Oh. <coughs> How did these work? <clears throat> oh, hello everyone. I'm the reviewer. Would you like to appear on this season of You Know Who as a Time Lord? You would. Fantastic. Simply go to the Last Angry Geeks Patreon page, pledge the $10 level called Geek Lord, and send the geek a picture of yourself that you would like to appear on You Know Who. I'll come up with a Time Lord name and origin for you. But there are only so many slots available as there are only so many episodes of You Know Who for this season. So act now. Thank you and good night.